Hey, it's been a while. Why's that? Well, it's a funny story. The last time I uploaded was nearly six months ago when I traded every Toronto Maple Leafs player and tried to win the Stanley Cup in NHL 23. I've tried uploading sports content on YouTube before and it never really resonated with anyone or gave me a reason to continue creating videos. And after about two weeks with nearly no traction on that video, I gave up again. I enjoyed my summer, didn't really think about hockey, and never really paid attention to the analytics of the video up until a few days ago when I happened to check on the channel and saw how much support you all gave me. It meant the world. The video took a lot of time to make and to have so many people engaged in something I had created was so special to me and inspired me to make more. So thank you. With that being said, NHL 24 is just about a month away from releasing, so be ready to see a bunch of hockey content over the next few weeks. Enjoy the video. The Chicago Blackhawks have been going through a lot of changes over the past few seasons. After the glory years of the early 2010s when they cemented themselves as a dynasty in the NHL, they've seen many major personnel and organizational changes, and it's now almost been a decade since they've won a playoff series. There's no question that the Blackhawks are headed in the right direction with the franchise-altering talent of Connor Bedard leading their rebuild. But how long will fans have to wait before this team is competitive again? For this video, we're going to be using the most updated NHL rosters following the 2023 draft and free agency. Some of the most noteworthy changes on this roster include Alex Killorn to the Anaheim Ducks, the numerous changes the Toronto Maple Leafs made to their roster, and the recent acquisition uh, of Eric Carlson by the Pittsburgh Penguins. I've already adjusted the lineup of the Chicago Blackhawks so that it is identical to the 2023-24 lineup projected on Daily Faceoff, and the goal is to flip this franchise from being one of the worst in the league to Stanley Cup champions in just one season. Looking at this roster, there's a lot that stands out right away, and almost none of it is good. Not only are the Blackhawks filled with third to fourth line forwards, but there's not a ton of value deep in their prospect pool that we could trade away to upgrade to our NHL core. Of course, Bedard, who holds the most value on this team, is the centerpiece of this video and won't be traded. But let's take a deeper look at the customized stats that this creative version of Bedard has. Like every hockey fan, I want Bedard to come in and score 50 goals, put up 100 points, like he's probably going to for the next two decades. But I simply can't justify the 86 overall rating I've seen EA give him when he's first drafted in franchise mode simulations. I still gave him straight 90s across the board in shooting, above average physical stats for his size, and elite puck handling skills. Um, and he's also equipped with the shock and awe x-factor along with the ankle breaker and puck on a string superstar abilities. While the overall might not reflect it, he's going to be elite in this simulation, and as true to an 18 year old Bedard as I think we'll see in the NHL this season. To start off with our championship turnaround, I think the most important thing this Blackhawks team needs is a goaltending overhaul. They've got three and a half million dollars committed to Peter Mrazek at 80 overall, and he was originally listed as their starter, but I just had to bury him down in our AHL organization because I could not find any way to dump his salary off to an NHL team, even the ones that were interested. Um, they were, all the results just said after the trade that they were trying to keep money so they could re-sign players in the offseason. Yeah, it's fair. Um, you don't want Peter Mrazek on your team. I get it, especially at that cap hit. Now, when I'm looking at acquiring a goaltender from around the league, I go to the best first, and that would be the Boston Bruins, um, with Linus Allmark taking home the Vesna this season. Um, at 90 overall, and at this cap hit, it's pretty much a no-brainer. Um, so I'll just do the open trade, and I see we have Lucas Reichel as the one-for-one one straight up. And right off the top, I'm thinking, no way. Um, we don't have a lot of prospects to to shed out, and I would like to use Reichel in a, pro, uh, a package to maybe get a better forward. Um, but we'll definitely keep this in mind because it is a relatively cheap price for one of the best statistical goaltenders in the game. Um, but let's look at maybe his backup, Jeremy Swayman, just as a start. Okay, and this already looks so much more appealing. I could get Jeremy Swayman um, for Philip Kurashev and two third round picks, which I think is a really, really good deal. Um, and it's a deal that pretty much every GM would take no problem. Philip Kurashev is good, but I'm pretty sure in terms of his value, it's not high at all. Even the, yeah, the two thirds are outweighing um, him. And he's probably the equivalent of a third round pick alone. So I think this deal is definitely something I'm more comfortable with doing. We could even circle back and take both of them um, if we wanted to make that our tandem for the year. Although I don't think that's the route I want to go down. Goaltenders do 
matter in this game, but not as much as the defensive core and the offensive core. And I think if we can get a solid goaltender like Swayman here and just put an incredible team in, f uh, in front of him, um, we'll be able to find success. So I think this is uh, definitely a deal I'm going to want to start with. Bang. All right. Welcome, Jeremy Swayman. All right, and now as we begin to restructure our defensive side of uh, things, I'm going to look at acquiring Mackenzie Weger from the Calgary Flames. Uh, 86 overall, left defenseman, in exchange for Wyatt Kaiser, um, a third-round pick who's progressed really well for the Blackhawks in his organization and is uh, 76 overall at 20. I also threw in a second-round pick just to kind of give us a little bit of an edge um, because without it, it's kind of like yeah they don't want it um so let's try the the second round pick here where we have a little bit more in favor um they should go for this so let's see trade accepted all right so welcome mackenzie Weger. just taking a quick intermission from our defensive core to uh get a new addition to the forward group here with carter for hagee an 86 overall second line left winger um, other than left wing, outside of Taylor Hall, we don't really have anyone, and I feel like I'm probably going to end up moving Taylor Hall. Um, so for Hagee, could be a good middle six winger for us, I think, with a good uh, scoring upside. Um, yeah, got good offensive stats. I, I, I like it a lot. Let's see um, if this trade will go through. Bang. Bang. All right, welcome to Chicago, Mr. Verhage. All right, trying to make some more depth additions to our roster um, here, looking at a trade with the New York Rangers. We're trying to acquire Philip Heedle, 84 overall. Looks like he could be a second line, probably will be a third line for us, um, center. And Eric Gustafson, who could be a great, um, pretty much fits anywhere in our lineup, as you guys can see by the scouting assessment there down at the bottom. But I think he'll end up being a third line pairing defenseman when it's all said and done. Um, we're shedding out a few prospects here. We got Paul Lewinsky. A uh, second round pick from 2022. Ryan Green, um, who I'm actually unfamiliar with. It looks like he's undrafted, but I don't think that's the case. 74 overall, 18. And Jason Dickinson. Uh, so we get to shed a little bit of cap as well. Um, yeah, let's see if this trade will go through. Trade rejected. All right, I'm going to try and add one more pick, maybe. Um, I don't want to add anything too crazy. Uh, third pick looks like we outweigh them pretty heavily, so let's see here. Nope. All right. Oh, man. For uh, having this on hard mode makes it very hard, obviously. Okay, so we added a fifth as well, and it looks like it's going to go through. We're going to move down McKenzie and Whistle, and bang. So a third and a fifth, Jason Dickinson, two prospects. Wow, that seems like a big overpay, but... Um, yeah, we got the deal done. So it's just one season, right? Let's uh, let's keep it pushing here. All right, now we're looking to make our first big blockbuster trade, and it's going to be trying to acquiring Timo Meyer. Um, likely going to be one of the line mates of Connor Bedard on this Blackhawks team, um, with a salary retained, of course. So it's a pretty easy for us to take on, um, along with Jonas Siegenthaler, 84 overall, who would be great um, for like a top four spot for us. Our defense is filling out really nicely right now. Um, and we're going to be sending Lucas Reichel the other way. Obviously, you have to pay a big price for someone like Meyer, along with a first-round pick. And um, this guy here, Vili Sarayarvi, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that, but that was just to even out the contracts. Um, it looks like we have a little bit of an edge here, but the way that this has been going, I wouldn't be surprised if we have to add maybe another pick or a prospect. So uh, let's check this out. Oh no, looks like it's gonna work uh, right away. So Mackenzie Entwistle back down to the AHL you go and welcome in Timo Meyer. All right, you're about to look at an absolute fleecing here from the New Jersey Devils. We're taking their whole team now after acquiring uh, Timo Meyer. We're also gonna get Jesper Bratt and Tyler Toffoli for Oliver Moore, who is an incredible prospect, of course. Um, one of the top prospects from the Blackhawks draft this year um a fifth a sixth and Nikita Zaitsev somehow this looks like it's pretty equal value um I just, man if this goes through um I think I deserve GM of the year right now regardless of what the outcome of this this season holds for us 
Uh, so let's uh, let's go for it. Oh my god, and it will go through. Um, what an absolute masterclass by uh, by us here, bolstering our top six wingers. Just to take a quick little break from the trades, let's uh, let's look at what the lineups already looking like. We got Jesper Bratt and Tyler Toffoli alongside Connor Bedard, so it's basically just like a replacement from New Jersey there, um, with Bedard inserted where Jack Hughes normally would be. Uh, then Timo Meyer, Philip Heedle, Carter Verhage, Taylor Hall now on the third line um, with Tyler Johnson and Andreas Athanasiu. I actually don't mind this as a third line. I'm probably going to try and upgrade our uh, centers a bit more here. Um, and obviously the fourth line is fine. And defensively, we look great as well. Mackenzie Weger and Seth Jones with a plus five. Um, I obviously wanted to try and move around Seth Jones because of the the cap hit he had um and i think we could spread it out into further assets we still might um but if nothing presents itself to me then i'm fine with keeping that right now might want to bolster up the bottom uh two pairings though just because they're good but they're not stanley cup um ready in my opinion we need we still need way more depth uh that's basically what i'm trying to get to and still looking at our goaltending situation jeremy swayman might want a better uh, backup goaltender for sure, um, but I, I can't complain with what we've got so far. With what we uh, the lineup that we came in with to now is definitely uh, on its way to being a, a 180. So um, yeah, let's get back to work. I'm looking to upgrade some defense just a little bit more, and that is what we're gonna get in Jacob Chikrin from the Ottawa Senators um, at a relatively good cap hit, 4.6 million. Um, and in exchange, we're going to try and send Taylor Hall the other way. Uh, like I said, now that we got all these wingers, I don't know if there's really a place for him in this lineup. Um, we're adding on a first round pick and Colton Dock. And let's see what we can get. Trade accepted. All right. I might have paid a little too much there, but uh, we haven't really given up too much in these trades so far. So, yeah, let's see what else we can get. All right, if we could get this trade to go through, it would be absolutely insane. We're trying to unite the future with the past and get Sidney Crosby onto this Chicago Blackhawks roster. And we're trading our uh, best prospect available right now, Kevin Korczynski, uh, seventh overall pick in 2022, along with Tyler Johnson to just kind of balance out the salary. And a first round pick, the value's heavily in our favor. Crosby's still a 93 overall. Look at all those X-Factors and the superstar abilities. Stats are still amazing. I think he's going to be the perfect veteran presence for Bedard to elevate him to a Stanley Cup. Let's see if this one can go through. Trade accepted. All right, so Connor Bedard and Sidney Crosby. All right, so we're just going to actually try and upgrade Philip Heal here. He's a third-line center right now um, behind Crosby. Bedard and Crosby and I think uh, Ryan O'Reilly here with his salary retain um, on a pretty cheap deal is going to be a good pickup for us um, so let's try and see if we can get him here with Heedle in a second and if not we'll try and add a little bit more trade rejected all right so they're interested in both so I'm not thinking it's going to be too much more maybe add another second trade accepted all right so it's Heedle in two seconds for Ryan O'Reilly pretty significant upgrade all right, when you're trying to win a Stanley Cup, depth is everything, and we got to just keep adding to our forward core here. And we're looking to get Brandon Hagel from the Tampa Bay Lightning, 84 overall, um, listed as the second line center. We'll probably end up playing on our third line. Um, I'm looking to send Ryan Donato, one of our depth centers, um, along with Ethan Del Mastro, uh, one of our good prospects, and a second round pick. Looks like the value's a little bit in our favor. We might need to add another pick, but uh, that's okay if we do. Let's see if this uh, works out. Trade rejected. Okay, let's try and add another second. Trade rejected. Okay, let's switch these to a first maybe. That is a lot um, for Brandon Hagel, but let's see. Trade accepted. All right, we got him. Uh, just move on. All right, since we're trying to bring back some of the old favorites um, from years past, we're going to try and reunite Patrick Kane. Back with the Chicago Blackhawks for one last run, along with Connor Bedard. Um, so we're throwing everything at them here. We're throwing Tyler Toffoli, Frank Nazer, a second and a first. This is a massive 
trade package for Patrick Kane, really overpaying like insanely. Um, I understand that, and you guys see how outweighed the value is. But let me tell you something: it's not easy to get Patrick Kane. Okay, so I tried this trade rejected. Okay, I tried adding the second trade rejected. Okay, and then guess what? You have to throw in another first round pick in order for this deal to go through. There are better value players I can get for this, but I think for the sake of this video, with it being the Chicago Blackhawks, I have to get Patrick Kane back for this last run. So, proposed trade. It's going to go through. As you can see, we're going to send down Jared Sonority. Um, welcome back to the Blackhawks. Patrick Kane. All right, we're looking to wrap up our rebuild here with an acquisition of a backup goaltender, and that's going to be Pavel Frank, who's from the Colorado Avalanche. 84 overall, listed as a backup. Should fit nicely there with Jeremy Swayman. Um, yeah, I mean, we're we're actually going to be able to move on from Peter Mrazek, hopefully, here as well, which would be a miracle. I did not think that was going to be possible in this rebuild. Uh, and you can see we're pretty heavily outweighing it. I might not need to throw in the second round pick, but I mean, on hard mode with these trades, it has been insanely difficult to, to do. So let's try it without the second at first. Oh, and all right, we saved a little bit of, of draft capital there. Not that I think there's anything more I need to do this team. I'll look around the league a little bit more, see if there's anything tiny bit I can add. But we're rubbing up close to the cap here, so uh, it might be time to wrap things up. All right, so I am looking at upgrading uh, one more thing before I wrap this up. I know I've said that probably a billion times at this point. Um, but here we're looking to acquire Chris Kreider from the New York Rangers in exchange for Carter Verhage. Um, just an overall swap, but I like the X factors on Kreider a lot, and I think he'll be uh, a lot better of a playoff player than Verhage will in this simulation. Um, they're both top six still. Um, Kreider obviously a little bit older, um, but both second line forwards. Let's see if we can uh, make this work out. Trade rejected. Okay, so because we didn't use that second round pick in that last trade, I'm going to tack that on there, see if that can move the needle at all for us. And let's see. Trade accepted. All right, so we got Chris Kreider. Let's take a look at the lineup. All right, so here's a complete look at the updated lineup right before we start simulating here. We got Timo Meyer, Sidney Crosby, Patrick Kane with a plus five on the first line. Incredible stuff there. Uh, just to, to get Kane and Crosby on this roster from what we had with a plus five along with Timo Meyer, it's just, it's insane. Um, second line, the newly acquired Chris Kreider. Chris Kreider, rather, uh, Connor Bedard and Jesper Bratt. Third line, we got a beast of a third line here with Andreas Athanasiu, Ryan O'Reilly, and Brandon Hagel. Then for our fourth line, we got Nick Foligno, Jason Dickinson, who actually we traded away, then we brought back um, in the trade for, Pat trade for Patrick Kane, rather, um, and Corey Perry. I think I might switch out uh, Corey Perry for Taylor Radish just because uh, Corey Perry doesn't have exactly the best luck when it comes to the Stanley Cup uh, final performances. Um... Maybe we'll throw him in there in the finals just to, I don't know, see if we can get the monkey off his back. This is a big coming home uh, time for a lot of the veterans on our team. Looking at the defense now, we got Mackenzie Weger, Seth Jones with a plus five. That's why I was hesitant to get rid of Seth Jones, which, just because I knew that that plus five with all those superstar abilities on that first line, uh, or that first pairing rather, is going to be amazing. Connor Murphy. Jonas Siegenthaler on the second pairing with a plus one. The only reason I have Jacob Chikrin on the third pairing is because of that chemistry. Um, I tried to make it better, and it really wasn't going to work out. So Chikrin's on the third line there with Gustafson for a great third pairing. Um, looking at the power play, we got uh, plus two on the first line. I might shift these around a little bit to see if I can get some better chemistry. Yeah, let's, let's move Meyer there um, to get the plus five. Second line, we got even you know what let's put uh let's put bedard on one of these power plays shall we we got to get the the kid involved a little bit more here so i don't know what that's going to do for the chemistry there it's going to stay the same all right well you know what? i'll tweak around a little bit anymore and i'll let you guys know if there's any adjustments uh, but on the penalty kill we're really nice we got a plus three there um athena's actually making quite the impact here on our roster i'm seeing how much he's playing i like it um, and goaltending, of course, to wrap it up, we got Jeremy Swayman and Pavel Frankuz there. I think that's a nice um, dynamic rather than having one dominant goalie. You got both to go um, have trust in throughout a playoff run. Anyways, let's get to the simulation here, wasting no more time. Um, these trades took forever, so thank you for being patient. Yeah, let's get right into the sim. 
All right, so we've simulated up until the trade deadline, and it is not good news for the Chicago Blackhawks as they're only five games above 500 right now, um, and we are seventh in our division. Now, the good news is the wild card spot's only two points out. Um, every other team has some games in hand, of course, uh, so that's not great. But let's take a look at some stats here, um, and then we'll try and look at maybe the trade deadline, see if there's any way that we can bolster up our roster. Um, yeah, so City Crosby leading the way, no surprise, 61 points in 62 games. But let's check out the main man, Connor Bedard. 14 goals and 25 assists for 39 points in 62 games. Obviously, with all this star power, it was going to be inevitable that he was going to um, not really shine um, the brightest. But we did get an overall increase at 83. Uh, that's very solid, in my opinion, um, for an 18-year-old. Definitely not the sort of 30 goal pace that everyone's anticipating him to have. Maybe that's on me for not bolstering his stats like crazy, but I don't know. Um, yeah. Chris Kreider, 21 goals. I think that was a great acquisition there um, for Carter for Hagee uh, towards the end of our rebuild. Patrick Kane, 58 points. Can't complain for the 34 year old. I, I, it's not that upper echelon of like over point per game Patrick Kane that we're, we're used to seeing in the NHL but it, at that plus five uh, chemistry I think um, those are some numbers I can't complain to see from him now the real issue comes when you look at the goaltending and I'm not liking how Jeremy Swayman's performing um, at a sub 900 save percentage there with carrying majority of the load over Pavel Frankuz so maybe we can see a little goaltending upgrade in our future there all right, so here we are in the trade deadline now, looking to make the final push here in the second half of the season, and we have to upgrade our roster significantly in order for us to make a run here. Um, but we don't have, obviously, a lot of options in front of us. Uh, Antti Ranta, of course, was someone that we wanted to get at the beginning of the rebuild, but he uh, doesn't seem to be performing that well either. Um, I'm going to take a look around here, see what I can find, see if there's any way that we can make our team any better. Alright, so with the trade deadline kind of being um, moving very quickly, you have to just find players as quickly as you can and see what you can do. Um, and that's what I'm going to try and do here with Carter Hart, acquiring him from the Philadelphia Flyers. Um, 87 overall, decent increase from um, Jeremy Swayman in the stats. Uh, yeah, let's see what we can get. Trade rejected. All right, we're going to throw everything we can at Carter Hart here. And the Philadelphia Flyers is at a fourth. No, maybe a third. They can't be that much more than that. Wow, okay. They're not comfortable taking on more salary. Well, I'm going to make you feel comfortable about it. There's two thirds in a second. Nope. All right. I don't know what salary you're, wor you're worried about saving because I'm giving you guys who are on one-year deals and I'm taking away someone um, with term, which doesn't really make sense. So, all right, we'll keep looking, I guess. All right, I'm going to be honest, guys. This is pretty impossible to upgrade my roster right now. This is one of the hardest uh, challenges I've ever done. Uh, all they want or the only thing I can get really is uh, Chris Letang out of the top players available, and I've been searching through all the different teams, um, yeah, I, did, I can't figure out anything right now, so I'm going to keep fighting away here in the last couple hours of this deadline, but it's not looking good for the Chicago Blackhawks. We might need to ride with the same team um, heading into the final half of the season. All right, guys, I'm making one final push here to make a massive blockbuster deal in the final hours of the trade deadline, and we're going to try and get Mika's advantage ad from the New York Rangers. They've been trade partners with us multiple times, and uh, we're going to be sending back Jacob Chikrin the other way. Obviously, one of our best defensemen on this team, but it pays a big price to get a big player like advantage ad who's having a great year. Um, I feel like we just need to go all out offense here because I, I thought our defense was good enough. Um, and I can't seem to find a better upgrade for a goaltender, so we're just going to have to make this team as offensively uh, insane um, as we can. So we're pretty much just up upgrading them with a bunch of prospects, sending back Jason Dickinson to match the salary, um, and we added in a second-round pick. I don't see there's a way that this is going to go through, but let's, let's try it, and we'll see what we can uh, work out. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. That, I did not expect that to work. Um, we're calling up Jared Tenorti, sure. So we're going to have a little bit of a weaker defensive core. Um, significantly weaker. But we're getting Mika's advantage ad. Um, can't believe it. Let's 
yeah, let's see what we can do now simulating the second half of the season. All right, guys, so looking at our lineup after the acquisition of Mika Zibanejad, this could go a variety of different ways. I have no idea how this simulation is going to go. Um, but we had to make a push, and I feel like adding him made this uh, offense, of course, significantly more dangerous. We got Timo Meyer on our third line, for crying out loud. Uh, Connor Bedard, second line right winger now instead of center. Um, it was actually a chemistry move. I wasn't just putting in there because of the fact that we wanted to make him a centerpiece of this video. He does have the better uh, chemistry there than Meyer does. Ryan O'Reilly on the third line. I don't know how this isn't working out like insanely well for us. He's having a great year. Um, all the offensive stats I can't really complain about for these guys. It's just, it. it I, I don't know. Teams are just better than us right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and simulate that. Oh, I guess I should show, sorry. I guess I should show the defensive core, how it looks after trading away Jacob Chikrin, um, our best defenseman. And it's not great. Um, we got Uyghur and Jones, obviously, with the plus five, which is awesome. Murphy and Siegenthaler, which I love. Um, Eric Gustafson and Ben Harper. I'm not really crazy about that fourth line, obviously. Um, our power play still got plus five and stuff, but that is our biggest um, and biggest weakness, rather. Um, yeah, so I guess let's just simulate this second half and hope for the best. There's not much more that we can do here. All right, so here we are at the end of the simulation, and we did make the postseason in the uh, first wild card spot uh, in the Western Conference. So the Chicago Blackhawks will be heading to the playoffs. And for this team, man, it just feels like a like get in and we can win type of thing, like the Tampa Bay Lightning are in the East. Uh, Mika Zibanejad finishing with the most points on the team. Pretty well spread out of uh, stats here. We got a lot of 30-plus goal scorers. We got... Um, Kane with the most at 36, Zibanejad, Kreider, and Crosby all with 30 plus goals. Then Bratt with 26, Meyer 25, O'Reilly on the third line with 23, and then Bedard finished with 20. So this was obviously the experiment we wanted to see. Bedard with 20 goals and 42 assists for 62 points in his rookie season. I think that's a great rookie season um, for Connor Bedard, and I think it's not too far off of what we might see in the NHL for real this coming season um i just think the personnel that he has around him isn't really going to warrant him getting many more points than that um any more standouts that we can see here seth jones with a nice year 51 points um in 82 games mackenzie Weger as well that plus five pairing definitely worked out nicely for us brandon hagel with 44 um yeah all right well let's um oh let's check out how our goaltenders did because they must have popped off towards the end of the year all right, Jeremy Swayman uh, came in clutch for us uh, and played decent, I guess. Like he, he pretty much did what was asked of him by getting that 900 save percentage, and it looked like it uh, improved over the second half. So can't complain about that. 37 and 25, an eight record. Prevel Frank, who's definitely a, a, a nice season by him with a 926 save percentage. Would have liked to see a bit more of him with just 14 games played. Um, maybe we'll see a bit of him in the playoffs. Who knows? But uh, yeah, let's find out who we have in the first round. And it's going to be the Vegas Golden Knights. So obviously this doesn't apply to this simulation, but they would have been the Stanley Cup champions um, just a couple months ago in the real NHL. So let's check a look at how their lineup is looking. Got Jonathan Marshall, so Jack Eichel, and Mark Stone. All right, so that's a very powerful first line. Probably a plus five there. Barbashev, Wah, and Kessel. Amadio, Stevenson, Carrier, Howden, Carlson, and Keegan Colstar. So they got really good centerman depth there. Um, their wingers are a little weak. I would say their top six is not... We have a better top six, but um, the way that this sim goes, I have no idea um, if we're going to be comparable at all. Their defense is very solid with Petrangelo and Theodore in that first pairing. I would say we're comparable. Um, if not, maybe they have a bit of an edge in the defensive um, category. And then Aiden Hill and Robin Lehner. This was the type of pairing that I wanted. Um, obviously, Robin Lehner probably won't be playing for them um, in real life next season, but... 
that's a benefit that I guess that they have of this this type of simulation. So let's go ahead and simulate through the first few games of these uh, this first round and see how we can do. All right, so game one is a win. Game two and game three, we got a three nothing lead here in the first round. Love that. Um, and okay, so they're gonna take game four. All right, and we get through in five games. I absolutely love that. I thought this was gonna be a another one of those simulations I did like in my Maple Leaf video where they just get knocked out in the first round. Absolutely not. We are powering through here. Um, Sydney Crosby with an incredible series. Um, they are going for 10 points in five games played. Um, so let's see who we're facing off in the second round. It's going to be the Vancouver Canucks. All right, let's take a look at their roster. Andre Kuzmenko, Elias Pettersson, JT Miller. That's quite the first line for them. I still would like to give ourselves the edge with that Crosby, Kane, and uh, Jesper Bratt on um, plus five. And then it just falls off a cliff here for them. So I don't know who's carrying the weight for them in terms of scoring right now. Um, it might be uh, defense, which also is super top heavy with Ronick and Hughes, and then uh, Myers and Cole on the second pairing. Is it their goaltending? Demko with an 8.84 save percentage. Spencer with an 8. <laughs> Spencer Martin with an 8.66. Who did they play in the first round? Because I don't know if they have any business um, being here. So they played the LA Kings. All right. Well. Um, Kings were a little bit of frauds, I guess. Let's sit through these first few games and see how we can do. And somehow the Vancouver Canucks have taken a 3 nothing lead in this series. Okay. Um, I don't like this. I don't know what to do. Let me take a look at some of the lines and see if I can make some adjustments. All right, guys. So the only adjustment I made here is I'm looking at... Um, Moving Timo Meyer to the top line and yes, we're Brat down here. I'm just looking at Brat and he's got one goal and three assists, which is just unacceptable for um, someone who's been playing on the top line with Patrick Kane and Sidney Crosby. Now, Timo Meyer's not playing much better, but um, we're hoping that we can activate him um, and do something to this roster. I might even move Chris Kreider up just so we can keep this second line um, really, really strong. Um, yeah, let's, let's do that. Um, and let's go back to the sim. All right, here we are, game four. We're going to be simulating through. Um, hopefully, we can keep the series alive. I would like to um, take this team a little further. I like the way that we've kind of come back um, throughout the second half of the season. And Sidney Crosby getting us on the board first with a 1 0 lead. Gotta love that. Oh, and just to wrap up the second period there, the Mika's advantage had given us a 2-0 lead. Um, okay, let's simulate the third here. I'm comfortable with this lead. 4-1. All right, so we brought ourselves back into this series. All right, trying to crawl our way back in here down 3-1. Let's go back into the simulation, and we're going to just speed through this first period, and Vancouver's going to take a 1-0 lead with Andre Kuzmenko getting one pass. Jacob Swayman there. All right, let's simulate through here. We have too many heroes, too many offensive heroes on this team um, not to be able to put up at least one goal here. This is getting a little scary. We only have 13 shots. There we go, and Seth Jones will tie it up for us halfway through the second period. Closing it out here, anything more? Anything more in the tank, boys? All right, so now we're gonna head into the third tied. Vancouver with the uh, seven shot advantage there. This is do or die for us right here. We need to see Patrick Kane. Where's Connor Bedard? Where's Sidney Crosby? Where's Mika Zibanejad? Where's Timo Meyer? The list goes on. There's too many names here that are being left off of the score sheet. So let's see um, who's going to be the hero for us in this third period. Vancouver with the power play, and we shut the door on that. Love that. Love to start. Okay, well, let's not, let's not keep taking penalties here. The shot advantage is heavily in favor of the Canucks right now. Final minutes, and we're getting absolutely nothing done here, but we're killing off a lot of penalties. Okay, we're gonna go into overtime. I'm gonna jump into this game here, and I will see you guys in a moment. All right, and here we are about to jump into overtime. There's a first look at Sidney Crosby in the Chicago Blackhawks jersey, and we are underway here. There goes Crosby down the wing. Oh, and we got Kreider right away. Oh. Nice shot there by Kreider. I think this this line here, 
of Crosby, Kreider, and Kane is pretty uh, pretty well rounded overall. You got Kreider as your power forward, and then you got the two skilled guys with Kane and Crosby there. Kreider doing a lot of the heavy lifting here, though. Kuzmenko turning it over. Wow, what a save there by Swayman right in the middle of the slot. Tyler Myers walking the line. Besser saved by Swayman, and we will get our first whistle of overtime. Almost nine minutes in. What a fast pace a period we got here. Um, as you can see, Andre Kuzmenko leading the NHL in goals throughout the postseason. Vancouver fans, uh, you better be excited to see him in the playoffs at some point. I don't know how long it's going to take for them to get there, but they will be there at some point. <laughs> Back goes Connor Bedard here. 98, we see him with the puck. Circling around, trying to create something. Oh, it's a Bandit Jack. Can't bury it there. Um, I think those two creative hockey minds, Bandit and Bedard, on the same line is something special. What a save there. By Swayman and back they go. Zabanajad. Oh, can't walk over the line, but Bedard's back checking now. Knocks off Tyler Myers. <laughs> Love that. Or is Tanner Pearson rather? Bedard working his way around. Sets up Felino and he can't get one past Demko there. We could be going to double OT here, and that's not something I see very often when I do a CPU simulation. Kreider with 10 seconds left trying to make something happen. He finds, oh my god, Patrick Kane. Almost scored a massive goal for the Blackhawks in the playoffs. Would be no, so no surprise there. Miller trying to get a final shot off, and he cannot, and we are headed to double overtime. Wasn't from a lack of chances that there was no score, but both goaltenders are standing really tall here. Uh, credit to Swayman, man. He's really took a turn here in the second half, and um, as you see, the shot totals there. 45 to 32 now. Um, still a 1 1 score. Let's see what we can do in this second overtime. Seth Jones pulling up the moves there, and Kreider now with the shot. What a save by Demko. That would have been a crazy goal. I did not expect Seth Jones to be kicking it off his foot there on the rush. Came with the poke check there. Gets down to Kreider right in front. No. Demko, what is. Up with this guy right now he's stopping absolutely everything we bring his way and the draw is won there by the Canucks but they can't get a shot off and it looks like we got a penalty coming to the Blackhawks would have been in a vulnerable spot trying to make this save but uh, Jonas Siegenthaler with a pretty tough tough call there um, yeah let's take a look here oh and it's just it's blatant, it's blatant, but it's uh, unnecessary for sure. Hughes can't make the pass, and Bedard picks it off and sends it back down the ice. And Athanasiu is going to get there first and just keep it down there. This is a great penalty kill here from the Blackhawks. Jesper Bratt now been pretty quiet in these overtime periods as he turns it over there down the right side boards, but gets it back. Zabanjad now. Working on his own. Cut into the middle. Breakaway Zabanjad. Oh my god, and he missed the net. Oh my god, and they're going to take a penalty. No. Oh, Brandon Hagel. What a play there by Zabanjad to just split the defenseman. And create a breakaway there for himself. Looked like there was no deeks there at all. He just used his stick to position the puck to get past the defender. But Brandon Hagel with a costly penalty there towards the end. 200 feet from his own net. Here comes JT Miller now trying to make a move, and that is turned over to Kreider. Oh, and they almost had another breakaway there with Zibanejad. But Gustafson here playing really good defense. Both, I'm really impressed with all of our defensemen right now. Oh, and Jones once again. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> Seth Jones with... Uh, a delay game penalty to get this to a 5-on-3 with just under 30 seconds left to go here. That's too bad for the captain. I forgot we even set captains. I didn't think Seth Jones was going to be the default captain there. But all right, I'm not mad at it, I guess. We only have Sidney Crosby, Patrick Kane on the same team. I guess Seth Jones gets the captaincy. All right, and that concludes the second overtime 
The Blackhawks are on a 5-on-3 here, heading into the third OT, 1-1. to one. Let's take a look at the shot totals, 48-39, to 39, so not a lot of shots there from the Blackhawks or the Canucks, really, in that uh, overtime period, but there was a lot of... Uh, a lot of defensive play, so I don't know. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> we got a long way to go. Okay, now with it behind the net, sets up Kreider and they score. And the Blackhawks are still alive. And we are only down three to two in this series now. I say only down, we still got a long way to go. But that simulation was a lot of fun to watch. It just took very, very long. Um, Chris Kreider, what a goal there, and what a setup from Patrick Kane right in front to keep this series alive. Alright, just thought it was worth noting there that Jeremy Swayman had a 49 save performance there um, for a 980 save percentage, which was absolutely insane. Stopped 49 of 50 shots. Um, but that would be a real shame if all of that was for absolutely nothing. So let's simulate game number six here. First period, Blackhawks go up 2-0. Who is it? Crosby Zibanejad. Love that. Second period, 4-0. Timo Meyer, two of his own. Love that. Third period, 5-3. Okay, made it a little interesting, um, but Zibanejad picks up his second. And uh, the Blackhawks are tied in the series now. Let's, uh, let's take it to game seven and see what happens. 2-1 after the first period, Nick Foligno and Connor Bedard, who opened the scoring in this game. Um, all right, second period, 3-2, Chris Kreider and Elias Pettersson. Now let's simulate here the final period in this series. Presumably, um, the Blackhawks with the power play can't get the extra goal to give them a bit of an edge. They've been outshot quite a bit in this series, but the Blackhawks' Patrick Kane... Gives them the two-goal lead with just five minutes left to go. As the clock winds down, they come back all the way down from 3-1 to one to win the series against the Vancouver Canucks and move on to the third round, the Conference Finals. All right, so we're going to be taking on the Dallas Stars here in the Conference Finals. So let's take a look at their lineup. Jason Robertson, Rupe Hints, Matthew Shane is no first line to slouch about. This top six is dangerous, dangerous rather, with uh, Jamie Benn, Joe Pavelski, and Tyler Sagan on their second line. Third line drops off a little bit. I think that's where we can take advantage the best um, in their defense. Obviously, is pretty much just Miro Heiskanen. But Jake Ottinger, 914 save percentage, is uh, a scary sight in itself. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to have a lot to work with here, but don't, don't count out, uh, Jeremy Swayman. I believe he's having an incredible playoff run of his own. So let's, let's take a look at his stats for a minute. Sidney Crosby, of course, leading the way with 16 points in 12 games, but Jeremy Swayman, 933 save percentage. Wow. What a, what a run here for this guy. What a pickup by us. Let's win this series. All right, so we're going to simulate through the first three games of this series. And we're going to take a 2-1 lead. All right, I like that a lot. So now let's go game by game here. 3-1. Love that even more. Now let's win it in five. Can't do that. All right, let's win it in six. And we do it. All right, now we are on our way to the Stanley Cup Finals. Let's see who we're going to be facing off against. And it's against the New York Rangers. I love the way that this is setting up for us. We did so many trades with the New York Rangers this season. We got Kane on our side. We got Zibanejad on our side now. Um, let's see how their roster is even looking right now. I can't imagine it's looking too dangerous. Um, Tyler Toffoli, who we sent over on their first line, having a pretty good playoff run with 17 points in 20 games. Their top center in though is Vincent Trocek. He's holding his own. Um, give him credit, but it's really Artemi Panarin carrying the offensive weight of this team. They got Blake Wheeler as their second line center. Okay, I didn't know he even ever played center, but they have him listed there as a center. Um, Vladimir Tarasenko, not great. Carter Verhage, not great. We definitely came out on the uh, past end of a lot of these deals, but their defense is insane. Hold on. Jacob Chikrin, I forgot we sent him over there. Um... 
Jacob Truba, Adam Fox, and Keandre Miller is a disgusting top four. Um, and then, of course, they have Igor, who's currently being outplayed by Jeremy Swayman. Not a big deal. But um, this should be a very, very exciting Stanley Cup final. I can't wait to get this simulation going, so let's see. We'll do the first three games like we always do, and we get a win, win, win. Bang, bang, bang. Love the start there. Um, let's see if there's any change in point leader. Nope, Sidney Crosby still. 28 points through 21 games. Let's simulate this, uh, this final game here and see if we can take home the trophy today. All right, we are one win away from glory. Let's head into game number four now. Simulating away. Let's waste no time. First period. Down one nothing. Tyler DeFoley. Not the way we want to start. But we go through the second period. 2-2 two -two tie. Miki's a bandage ad. Tyler DeFoley again giving us trouble um, in this revenge series. Uh, even though he never played a game for us. Jonas Siegenthaler though. <laughs> I don't know how this guy is producing offensively, but he is. I'm gonna have to check his stats at some point. Let's uh, let's play through this uh, third period here, as we are just one goal away, one period away, one win away. But Braden Schneider says no, 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 and gives the Rangers the three-two lead. Another power play for the Rangers. We're really an undisciplined team, which has come to not really affect us too much until now. Um, and we got nothing for us in game four. That's okay. We're going to move on. We got 3-1 lead still. Um, we just... We can't count them out, though. They got Igor. It's going to be tough to score. We're going to have to put all of our offense on full tilt here for that one game to win glory. We see Patrick Kane. We see Blake Wheeler in the first period of game number five. Stars are coming out to play. Second period, Connor Bedard, the 19-year-old. He's coming out, and he's saying, hey, I'm here. I'm taking this trophy home. He could have, dare I say, the winning goal in the Stanley Cup Finals in his first full season. Can you imagine the poetry as we see the clock wind down? Connor Bedard, the headlines in the newspapers. Jesper Bratt. All right, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. We got two minutes left in this game. I'm going to jump in. I got to see the celebrations. I got to see it. I got to see it. All right, people. A minute 18 left in the third period until glory. Keandre Miller. Oh, my God. I, that could have been a disaster. I, whoa. <laughs> let, me, let me change sides here. I just recognized that they had me playing as the Blackhawks, no thanks. I'm going to be hanging out right in the middle here, but hopefully uh, Keandre Miller doesn't score as he was just walking down Main Street. Um, okay, there we go. Sidney Crosby back the other way. Comes up the middle, misses the empty net. No, that would have sealed the deal for us. Um, well, it's already, the, the deal seems to be uh, dealt. It's to Foley, oh my gosh, brings it off the crossbar. Great bat out there. Can't get it out though. Seth Jones carries it out, takes it nice and slow, turns it over at the red line. All right, let's. This isn't really looking like a clean finish here for us. 30 seconds left. Absolutely run over there by Mackenzie Weger. Seth Jones, Crosby, windmill move with 30 seconds left. Uh, kind of bold there. Rangers trying to push for anything, but Crosby says no. Patrick Kane, could he finish it off? No. 12 seconds left. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, oh, what a save, 1. The Chicago Blackhawks have come from being one of the worst teams in National Hockey League history to being Stanley Cup champions just one season later. Ladies and gentlemen, this is... Arguably one of the best single season rebuilds I think ever accomplished in this video game. You look at where this team was to where we got them. It did, it wasn't pretty. We were not even in the playoffs at the trade deadline. And we came, we conquered, 
the one deal we made that made the difference was the trade from Mika Zibanejad. I'll say it. That was the deal. He put us over the edge offensively. We knew that we were going to be a team that was just going to have to outscore everyone. And we did that. We squeaked in as a wild card team. And we, uh, we just had to get in. We knew that. So here comes Captain Seth Jones. This looks so weird. It should be Patrick Kane or Sidney Crosby, of course. But the Chicago Blackhawks are the 2024 Stanley Cup champions. This is insane. This is insane. Let's see who gets the first touch of the cup here. Or do I get to decide? I know that was... Uh, yeah, I will get to decide. That's amazing. Well, I think it's only right. What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? What I, I didn't even get to decide that. that. My controller didn't even decide that. All right, well, I guess Eric Gustafson gets to hoist it first. It doesn't seem very poetic at all. Um, let's see who's going to get it next. Patrick Kane comes back, wins the Stanley Cup in one season, back with the Blackhawks. He saw what we had built here, and he had to be a part of it. We just had to work out the right deal. It took forever, but it's all worth it, isn't it? All right, now let's get the big group shot there. Oh my gosh, what a group of players this was. You can see Connor Bedard somewhere in there. Chicago Blackhawks, Stanley Cup champions. Now we're going to take a look at the Stanley Cup being engraved with these players' names. Of course, many of them have been there before, but we're going to see... Where's his name? Where's his name? Where's his name? Connor Bedard. Right after Andreas Afanasiu, the third name there on that list. What an incredible accomplishment for the young man, who was a big contributor, scored the Stanley Cup winning goal for the Blackhawks in his first season. Gets the third star of the game as well on top of that. Let's go look at some stats of the season, some awards. Wow. All right, now we're going to look at the awards for the regular season here. Um, we got Chicago Blackhawks, of course, the Stanley Cup champion, uh, President's Trophy, New Jersey Devils. Um, those are the two team awards. Then you got the Art Ross, went to Nikita Kucherov. Hart Memorial Trophy went to Nikita Kucherov. Victor Heaven with the Norris. Tampa was all over. Oh my gosh, Lady Bing, Nikita Kucherov. But Luke <clears throat> Evangelista of the Nashville Predators takes home the Calder Memorial Trophy. But you know what Bedard says? You can have it. I'm going to have a cup in my first season. So, um, Conn Smythe goes to Sidney Crosby, of course. Vesna to Robin Lehner. Jennings to Robin Lehner. What a comeback story for Robin Lehner. Masterson to Eric Chernak. Jack Adams. I would say the Jack Adams definitely deserves to go to the Blackhawks, but whatever. Um, Selkie. Anze Kopitar. Ted Lindsay. Nikita Kucherov. Maurice Richard, Nikita Kucherov. I gotta go look at some of these stats, man. This is insane. So Connor Bedard finished at an 84 overall as an 18-year-old. All right, I guess he would be, would he be 18? I don't know his birthday. Whatever. 62 points, 20 goals. Great season. But let's see how uh, our fella Luke Evangelista did. 33 goals and 41. Wow. All right. Good on him, man. That was a great year, especially on the Predators. Um, I will say, though, it was definitely going to be difficult for Bedard to put up that many points on this stack of a roster as we were trying to win the cup at the same time, and he still produced very nicely. Um, I think if you took away some of these superstars, definitely some of their offensive numbers would be um, going to him. Let's go look at um, who just led the entire league in some stuff. Well, we saw all those awards won by the Tampa Bay Lightning, and Nikita Kucherov definitely uh, deserved pretty much everything. He had 73 goals, 59 assists for 132 points. That's 20 more than Connor McDavid was even able to put up, all the way up to a 96 overall now. Um, insane. And then you can also look at Victor Hedman, who finished with the most points among defensemen, 92 points. 78 assists, 14 goals. What an insane year it was for him. Now all the way up to a 95 overall at 32 years old uh, with the franchise potential, of course. 
just uh, an unreal season by the Tampa Bay Lightning, but uh, we got the real hardware here with the Chicago Blackhawks, and that was winning the Stanley Cup championship. Anyways, guys, that's going to conclude this rebuild. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any more suggestions for videos to do, I will promise I'll be uploading a lot more frequently. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.